what is up everybody golden yogi here and you are tuning into the channel with the golden perspective today we're going to take a look at the glass node insights weekly newsletter before we get into that i want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already thank you to all those who have i truly appreciate it and while you're down there uh turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up and also in the description is a link to my library or odyssey channel feel free to join me there you can earn your own rewards by uh, uh, staking to my videos and you can earn revenue off of the revenue that is generated so also please leave me a comment let me know what you're thinking my only request is that you please be civil in your discourse Kindness and compassion are absolutely free, and if we each utilize those, I believe we can make the world a better place a little bit at a time. So, without further ado, let's get started with the week on chain, week 45, 2021. Bitcoin investor conviction appears to be at all-time highs, alongside numerous metrics ranging from price to hash rate to proportion of mature coin supply. <clears throat> Bitcoin has had a remarkably strong week, consolidating between 59,743 and 64,242, holding on to almost all of October's gains as the Bitcoin price coils into what appears to be a very tight bull flag. On the the on-chain market continues to show strength in supply dynamics while on-chain activity remains well below bull market highs. Long-term holders have distributed a very small fraction of their holdings as is typically observed in all prior cycles. However, despite hovering just below all-time highs, on-chain activity remains only marginally above bear market levels. Additionally, exchange balances continue to deplete and minor hash rate and USD revenue are approaching new highs. This combination of strong supply dynamics, mining network recovery, and relatively slow network activity points to a fairly constructive outlook for Bitcoin over the coming weeks. <clears throat> also, just to check out here, they have this new on-chain dashboard. It's a video analysis of everything. Sounds like they're trying to take over what I'm doing right now. But that's okay. You decide what you prefer. Assessing supply side dynamics, on-chain analysis provides us with a view over the movement of coins between investor, exchange, and other entity wallets. Generally speaking, we use a combination of coin lifespan time since last spent and heuristics to distinguish between experienced smart money and inexperienced new investors. Typical behavior as Bitcoin prices approach all-time highs is that long-term holders, experienced investors, begin their distribution. As Bitcoin pushed to the recent all-time high of $66,000, supply held by long-term holder also reached a peak hodl. This is the point in time which, uh, where they collectively owned a uh, local maxima of the entire coin supply, 81.5% in this case. Since then, long-term holders have spent 0.73% of the coin supply back into liquid circulation, providing an upper bound estimate for the degree of sell-side pressure sourced from this cohort. This spending behavior has even slowed down the long-term holder net position change metric, which has been a large accumulation period since April this year. The rate of long-term holder accumulation reached over 400,000 BTC per month for around five months through, late, uh, through to late September, and now has returned to a neutral level. This indicates that over the last 30 days, long-term holder supply is flat on net, and an equivalent volume of coins are maturing into long-term holder status as are being spent out of it. <clears throat> we can see similar spending behavior in the spent volume age bands, where the dominance of coins older than one month has risen to 6% of total on-chain volume. Note, however, that levels of 6% were commonplace throughout much of 2021 and especially in quarter one where it reached over 10% as the bull market powered higher. This metric highlights that while older coins are increasingly on the move, the market appears to be absorbing the sell side without issue. Note also that the bull market can often sustain this elevated sell side pressure for some time before topping out. Just looking at different peak dynamics. 
To provide a quantitative estimate of the sell side, we can look into the derived supply metric, tracking how many coins older than one year are coming back into liquid circulation. Generally speaking, investors who have weathered Bitcoin volatility for 12 months are quite likely to have a reasonable gauge of market risk in what is considered expensive versus cheap coins. What we see, what we can see is that around 6.5 thousand BTC are being revived on a daily basis at present. What is also apparent is that this is a relatively low level compared to the 2017, the 2019 and 2021 bull runs where over 20,000 BTC were, were revived per day. In fact, the current levels of revived supply are similar to the spending patterns throughout late 2019 and 2020, which are mostly considered a late stage bear market. To further drive home how relatively light the current spending is, we can review the HODL waves filtered for coins younger than three months. This metric will trend higher when older coins held by experienced investors are distributed and sold. By definition, given the coin supply younger than three months is an all-time high low of 15%. This means that coins under three months are at an all-time high of 85% of the supply. Over 85% of the coin supply has remained dormant since August 2021. Investors are just not spending their coins. The above supply dynamics paint a compelling picture of long-term holders hanging on to some, uh, hanging on to the vast majority of their stack. Current spending appears to be closer to taking strategic profits rather than a market-wide exit due to a belief that these prices are expensive. <clears throat> assessing dynamic, uh, assessing dem demand dynamics. The demand dynamics in a bull market tend to come into two phases. One, smart money accumulation, which is before the all-time high, where on-chain activity is low, set supply dynamics remain constructive, and most spending looks like strategic profits being taken. Then there's the hype and euphoria stage, which is after the all-time high. As media coverage of the asset increases, retail trader uh, interest rises, and on-chain activity starts to climb. Older, more experienced hands generally increase their distribution from this point onwards. Both the sell side supply dynamics described above and the sell and and the dy uh, demand dynamics that follow both speak strongly to current market characteristics. Still being of the first phase, smart money accumulation, albeit closer to the transition of, out of this phase. The first evidence of this exchange net flow, the, sorry, the first evidence of this is exchange net flows, which continue to demonstrate a remarkable dominance of outflows. Outflows have accelerated uh, this week, reaching over 500 or 5,000 BTC in net withdrawals on a daily basis. So this is money moving uh, from exchanges, out of exchanges, into private wallets. As a result of continued exchange outflows, the aggregate BTC exchange balance has fallen to a multi-year low of 12.9% of circulating supply. Even as Bitcoin consolidates below all-time highs, Exchange reserves continue to deplete. <clears throat> Meanwhile, on-chain activity is recovering, albeit very slowly, and certainly far, uh, far below historical examples of hype and euphoria as in 2017 and Q1 2021. Transaction counts remain well below the peaks uh, seen in the first half of 2021, currently around 225,000 transactions per day. This is uh, this is coincident with levels seen in uh, seen throughout the 2019-2020 bear market. <clears throat> A very similar pattern can be seen in the number of new on-chain entities observable in the on-chain transaction space. A very modest uptrend is in play with new entities hitting 110,000 per day as transactions. Again, this is barely above levels sustained throughout the 2019-2020 bear market where activity was between 90,000 and 110 new entities per day. This observation of prices near all-time highs while the on-chain activity is near bear market lows is quite remarkable divergence. It speaks to a convincing case where, where the market is likely still in the quiet accumulation phase punctuated by low activity large exchange outflows, and very modest strategic spending by experienced holders. 
So we have this weekly feature here too. The mining industry continues to recover as the extraordinary event of the 52% of the hash power network dropping offline almost overnight. On a seven day uh, moving average basis, hash rate declined from 176 ETA hashes to 84 ETA hashes during the second half of May. This decline of 92 ETA hashes per second was equivalent to the entire hash, per, hash power of the network up to October 2019 since the low in early June. Hash rate has recovered by 95% to reach 164 ETA hashes. Given the current recovery trend, the mining market hash rate could very well reach new all-time highs before the end of 2021. Minor revenues denominated in BTC are well known to decline dramatically every four years as the block subsidy uh, component is program programmatically, halved, programmatically halved with transaction fees included. The current aggregate minor revenue fluctuates between 900 and 1000 BTC per day. There remains an ongoing debate re uh, regarding whether these having events are likely to have adversely effective uh, had to adversely affect protocol security long term. We won't analyze these fully here, but the following charts offer some commentary on the current trend and state of play. While minor incomes are denominated in BTC, their incurred costs of hardware, logistics, power, and financing are denominated in fiat currency. While the block subsidy is indeed uh, at the lowest level in history, minor revenues in fiat currency are anything but. Since the halving event in May 2020, USD aggregate revenues are up over 550%, rising from the $9.3 million per day to over $60 million per day. In fact, daily revenue is almost at all-time highs, off uh, just by 5% from the peak of $67 million per day set in May. This means that the mining industry is being paid almost at the highest level in history for their services. One approach to assess the total aggregate in, uh, investment into Bitcoin mining industry is via the thermocap, a metric that calculates a cumulative sum of all USD value block rewards since Genesis. The assumption is that miners are rational, profit motivated actors and will thus invest up to 99.9% .9 or $99.99 .99 to win a reward of $100. The Bitcoin thermocap is technically always at all time high but its growth has accelerated alongside rising prices lately to reach 32.8 billion. In the approximate 18 months since May 2020 halving, the thermal cap has grown by 93% up a total of $15.8 billion. In other words, 93% of all USD denominated security budget has been issued in the last 18 months, even after the latest halving event. With Bitcoin hash rate almost fully recovered from a 52% decline, minor USD revenues near all-time highs and 93% of the security budget issued in the last one and a half years, uh, the Bitcoin security and incentive system appears to be functioning exceptionally well. Such a simple protocol design with uh, simply extraordinary results. That is it. My little... Uh, simple sentence here at the end <laughs> such a simple protocol design with simply extraordinary results i think that has to do with uh just how price seems to move more and more up and through each having because otherwise miners would not earn that much now like they said here there was a point of contention which they're not going to get into now um uh the, 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 where was it anywhere said something about that in here oh yeah there remains uh an ongoing debate regarding whether these having events are likely to have to adversely affect protocol security long term um and they said they would not analyze this right now something to analyze on your own perhaps um leave me a comment let me know what you think about all this uh, i think it's quite interesting oops you know all this uh at play here um it's hard to say there's been some new information i just heard today i have not verified it myself uh um about like uh the either anthony pompliano exiting 
his own fund or something about exiting Bitcoin position from the fund. I don't know all the details. If anybody knows about that, I'd be happy to hear more links um, uh, would be helpful. Leave it down in the comments. Let me know what you think. All right, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a beautiful one and I'll see you next time. Peace.